Hi, I'm T.S. Kelso, the operator of Celestrac, and today I'd like to take a little bit of your time to show you the exciting new feature we have to allow you to visualize passes for your location. So we're going to start on the uh, Celestrac homepage, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the current data page, and we're going to look for the supplemental TLA data. Now we're going to use the recent Starlink launch as an example, but if you look at the top, you'll notice that we now have a new eye icon that shows passes for a particular data set. So we're going to load this by clicking on the icon and it'll bring up the globe that you're used to seeing before with all of the data for the three Starlink launches today. And of course, the first thing that it wants to see is what your user location is. And so the easiest thing to do is use the current position, which will use the location defined by your browser. And um, then it will, and usually it, it will ask you for permission. And I've obviously already done that on this browser. And then it will take you to the view from that location so that you can see where you are. And if you're not sure that you're where you're supposed to be, you can hit the home view and pop up above it and look down and you'll see a black dot that shows uh, where your location is. So if we go into the Starlink data, now we can limit the objects we want to look at for doing pass calculations by coming down to the quick search. So for Starlink, uh, it was the first launch of 2020, and so we're going to put 2020 into the search field, and that's immediately going to filter down to all the ones that have an international designator starting with 2020. And so I'm going to pick visible only passes for the first object, and if I click on that, I will very quickly see that uh, we go back to our location, and then the list of passes will come up for that location. And so we can look at where the local start culmination, the point that's highest above the horizon or closest to the observer, and then the end time. And if we click on any one of these times, the view will automatically jump to that particular time. And so we can see in this case, we've got uh, a pass in the evening for Starlink, and we're looking at it just above the horizon, which indicates that it's uh, coming out of eclipse, uh, Earth shadow as it's uh, getting to this point. And if we're really interested in getting the best possible pass, so this one looks like it'll be fairly low on the horizon, we can look at the culmination elevation in this column. And in fact, we can actually just sort on that to get the maximum culmination. And we see that there's actually a pass that gets up to 35 degrees. That happens to be tomorrow at 0625 local time. So if I click on that, now you see we have a pass that's going up much higher and that uh, we're coming out of shadow actually 16 degrees above the horizon. And so I can animate the view, and so we're not running in real time right now, but we can see how the this train of 60 satellites will actually move across the sky in real time. And of course, we can do the same kinds of things that we do in orbit visualization to speed things up or to return them to real time or to actually go backwards. And we can, we can also control the time by using the slider at the bottom. You notice that it's overly sensitive on the default setting. And so what we wanna do is change the resolution to maybe one minute. We'll go back to the beginning of that start time. And if we grab the window, now we can see that we can you know, drag the slider to go through time and see how things are evolving, particularly if you want to see 
where the train might be at a particular time in the sky where it's relative to some of these bright stars that we're seeing in the background. And then if you decide that you want to, you don't want all these columns or you want to uh, change some of the columns, you can come over on the side. If we didn't want to use local time and we actually wanted to use UTC, we could click those columns on or off. And uh, we can, if we decide we don't need certain columns, you can do that. And that's probably more appropriate if you're using a smaller device like a, uh, a smartphone where you have limited real estate. But then when you get into the pass, uh, the ideal way to view the pass is to actually switch to real-time mode. Now, of course, this isn't uh, the time during the pass, but it will immediately take your clock to the, the real time. And then we can close the window at the bottom so that we can see what's going on. So probably easier to see if I turn real time off, uh, we'll open the window at the bottom, we'll jump to the time here. And then if you uh, close the window again, you can see it's easier to see what uh, where all the objects are. And in fact, you can see there's some of the objects that are already moving to higher uh, altitudes. And so they're drifting behind the rest of the pack as they go relatively slower through the orbit. And so uh, that's really quickly in a nutshell is you know how we use pass visualization. And it's intended to be really, really simple for coming through and finding when an object is going to pass over your location and allowing you to, to find that and track that uh, easily, just like what we do for orbit visualization. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know and I hope you enjoy our new feature. Thanks.